Hello and welcome to the Political Ranter Show. Did you miss me? First of all, I hope that everyone had a really good International Women's Day, which was yesterday. And today's episode is going to be about women's issues. The first thing I want to talk about is Mahari Black, who is the SNP Member of Parliament for Paisley and Renfrewshire South. Amazing and inspirational speech that she gave to the Chamber about hate crime and a about misogyny and about the abuse that she suffered at the hands of male MPs and at the hands of trolls online. I'm very, um, very proud to watch a fellow young female who has such a bigger platform use that platform to speak out about some of the issues that she has been facing ever since being elected in 2015. And it really does show that even though women's rights have come a long way from you know medieval times, 1900s, it's become a long way but we still have ways to go when it comes to equality and when it comes to the treatment of women in power. I may disagree on the constitution and we may come from different walks of political life but I definitely think this was a speech that needed to be given and who better to um, to give a speech like this than the youngest female MP in the House of Commons so it was just great to watch. In her speech she highlighted some of the worst insults that she's ever been called and this was from Trolls Online and some male MPs from different opposition parties and she is believed to be one of the first MPs to ever use swear words or that type of language in one of her speeches and due to the nature of her speech and due to the nature of the insults she was reading out I definitely think this is a good thing because if she's highlighting some of the worst insults that she's ever been that she's ever been called I think to highlight those issues you need to use that type of language you need to read exactly what you've been called so people can understand the nature of the things that you're going through as a person and as a female politician in some sort of power and who has a large platform the only way we're going to fight misogyny and the only way we're going to fight hate crime is to make sure that we have more women in power and to make sure that we have more women who have platforms to speak out against these issues, to change public perception of these things. Now to just give you a bit of background, it's been a hundred years since women first got the right to vote and this was only some women because it was women over the age of 30 and women who uh, owned land. And in 1918, women first got the right to stand for parliament and since opening those gates, we've had amazing women MPs come forward and bring about justice change and equality for women in politics and especially in modern times the first MP that springs to my mind is Harriet Harman. Now I know me and Harriet Harman do not agree on everything when it comes to politics, probably not being my first choice for leader of the Labour Party because of her actions when she was acting leader such as abstaining on um, benefit cuts coming from the Tories and her support of a graduate tax which I do not support. I think we can all recognise some of the work that she's done for women and equality ever since coming into Parliament and ever since she's been known and had that platform. She has done a lot of good work for women's rights so I think we can all acknowledge that. Now we have more fantastic left-wing women coming into Parliament, such as my personal pick for Prime Minister one day, Laura Pickock, and other female MPs, such as Rebecca Long-Bailey and Caroline Lucas. All these women have helped bring forward women's rights causes and have given us good representation when it comes to women in Parliament. However, not every woman who goes into Parliament will be a friend of women, because we currently have a female Prime Minister from the Conservatives, Theresa May, and what has she done for women's rights? And when you look at her party's record and her record in Parliament, I don't think her record is something to boast about. One of the biggest issues today facing young women in this country is period poverty and Theresa May has done nothing about this. She has not committed to making sanity products available in education facilities for free for young women, something that is in the Labour Manifesto. Cuts and austerity measures that have come down from the Conservative government have hurt women the most because looking at the statistics I have pulled up on my iPod here Bus sleeping has doubled in the past five years, according to The Guardian in 2017, and this is seeing an increased number of homeless women on our streets. And as we know, homeless women are even more at risk on the streets because of stuff like trafficking and the sex industry. To The Guardian, nearly one in four females on the streets have been sexually assaulted 
since 2017, the housing crisis and lack of an affordable housing, which is a direct result of one of another policy enacted by another female Prime Minister, Right to Buy, means that there are less people who are able to afford housing, and this also affects women more. And the government is not looking to repeal Right to Buy, and the government's house building records have been the lowest since the 1920s, and obviously this is affecting the housing market and less women are able and less women are available to get on the housing market because of these unaffordable prices. What I consider affordable and what the Tory government considers affordable is very different. All these stats that I have read out to you today have been a direct result of Tory politics and I just want to mention that people do have a policy to try to end period poverty where they will make sanity products available for free in education facilities and they have announced a 10 million spending plan to make this happen also have a plan to build 1 million council homes during their term in parliament. Mick Corbyn did announce in 2018 in January that Labour will purchase 8,000 homes to help combat rough sleeping and homelessness. So we know